Radio Sultanate of Oman, ninety point four FM, and the Sultan Kabu Center for Islamic Culture presents twenty twelve season three of reaching out, reaching out through dialogue, presented by. Hatem Al Abdis Salam, hosting a group of intellectuals and experts from different fields. Don't miss the interesting discussions on science, comparative religion, culture, education, human behavior, and social issues. Reaching out through dialogue only in the holy month of Ramadan. Let them so. Iman in action. Human thoughts are merely moving shadows. Though present, they are transparent and ineffective. But once a thought transform into a belief. The transparent shadow solidifies into physical behavior that could potentially become an unstoppable force. A man's belief, a man's belief, man's belief dictates, dictates the human he would become. It is what drives the forces of good and evil from the deepest parts of the human heart and mind and translates them into actions. Belief, Beliefs dictate, how we, interact with our dictate how we interact with our environment and others around and us. Others around us. What does reality tell us about our faith? Do our actions and transactions, our actions and transactions reflect, our beliefs reflect our beliefs in the six pillars of Iman? The six pillars of Iman? Iman, 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 Iman. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. All praise be to Allah, the master of the day of judgment. And peace and blessings be upon his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Allah, grant us knowledge, wisdom, and sincerity. Dear listeners, I'm your host Hatim al-Absalam. I salute you all with a salutation of the people of paradise. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please join me in welcoming my distinguished guest, Sheikh Saud bin Ali al-Hashmi, who is in the oil and gas industry. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Saud. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa How are you today? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much, Sheikh Saud, for joining us in season three of the program. Of course, today is the first day of the month of Ramadan, and we're all excited to start the program. And uh, it's been a whole year since we last met in the show. And uh, today, inshallah, we're starting this season. And uh, we have a very interesting topic. But before we start uh, in today's topic, we want us to guide us a little bit and tell us how can a Muslim maximize the use of this blessing month? First of all, uh, as well, I have to salute all dear listeners. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me this chance again for the third season as you mentioned brother Hatim mm. I feel really honored to be uh, in this program for the third time and uh, this is uh, by the grace and mercy uh, of uh, the almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course it is the first day of Ramadan a full year has passed during this uh, past year we lost many loved ones mm. some of them we lost them by car accidents unfortunately some of them died passed away by sickness and whatever mm. so being alive till today and uh, having this chance to live another holy month of ramadan is a blessing mm. and uh, of course we need to maximize the use of this blessed month of ramadan by being uh, pious considering it as it is the last chance mm. because we never know are we going to live another month of ramadan mm. are we going to have the blessings of ramadan 
when uh, all uh, good deeds are multiplied by 70 at least okay so when you pray one compulsory prayers it's considered 70 70 prayers when you give a charity generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan mm. is uh, unique and none of a true believer would like to miss the chance of uh, having the maximum benefits of this month. So what you're trying to say, it is the best investment that a Muslim can make in this holy month of Ramadan? Of course. Hmm. Amongst this month, there is a night where the deeds are equal to 1,000 months. Hmm. Okay. The beginning of this month is mercy. Hmm. Allah showers his mercy, hmm. then uh, forgiveness. Then at the end of Ramadan, the last 10 days of Ramadan, when salvation from salvation hellfire, salvation from hellfire. Mm. So we should really consider. I always uh, tell myself mm. that Saud, you may not get this chance again. Mm. So that really boosts me to do better. Mm. And uh, I want this month of Ramadan to be amongst of my witnesses in the day of judgment. Mm. So that is the only way where we can maximize when we consider it as the last chance and the last month of Ramadan we live. Mm. So if we are granted another month of Ramadan, similarly, we will welcome it as it is the last because any day we can leave and depart and we are gone. So what is remained is our deeds. There is something that I wanted to discuss with you before we get into today's topic. Yeah. It's uh, There is an argument among uh, many people about when to start the holy month of Ramadan and when to end it. Some countries start before and some start after. Mm-hmm. Is there a way that we can unify the holy month of Ramadan, the start and the end of the holy month of Ramadan? It's a good question, uh, Hatim, and uh, I thank you for it. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us or instructed us to do particular forms of worship, Mm. some of these worships, they are related to time, Mm. specific time, when to start and when to finish. Like the five prayers we pray every day, they are related to the sun movement. Mm. Okay, so early, just before dawn time Mm. before the sun rise Mm. we should have prayed a fajr prayers Mm. similarly uh, duhur the midday prayers Mm. and all other prayers so the uh, form of worshiping which is prayers salah is related to the sun movement Mm. regarding fasting the month of ramadan it is related to the movement of the moon Mm. okay so our Prophet Muhammad, peace be, upon him. Uh, peace be upon him, he told us or instructed us exactly when to start the month of Ramadan and when to finish. Mm. Before his guidance or instruction, it is mentioned in the Holy Quran mm. that uh, we should start uh, when we see the crescent. Mm. Of, uh, the beginning of the, the month. The beginning of the month, mm. the lunar month. Mm. Okay. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون. So when you take the movement of a moon around the world, of course you will know there should be a difference, natural difference. Mm. Of the birth of the crescent. Mm. So, according to people who are really into this science, astronomy, mm. they prove it that crescent can be born, say, in eastern part of the world, 
later or earlier than the western part of, of, the, world. of mm -hmm. the world or the vice versa. I can't uh, remember exactly, but this is a fact. This is a scientific uh, fact. Mm -hmm. So unifying the start or the end of the month of Ramadan is not possible mm -hmm. because even uh, after the Prophet Muhammad, peace, peace be, be upon, upon him, mm -hmm. was, there are some companions who proved that the Prophet said, Likulli Hmm. So each nation has its own crescent. Hmm. What the prophet meant is the birth of the crescent. crescent hmm. Okay, he did not mean that each nation will have a hmm. separate moon. That's what he meant. Hmm. And also, Hatim, I want to draw attention to something. There are some countries who really depend on the astronomist for eleven months. Mm. lunar months mm. and they don't disagree with them when the month starts or when it ends throughout the year mm. they depend on them on prayers timing mm. surprisingly enough they don't believe them when the start of <laughs> Ramadan, the month, Ramadan and mm. the start of Hajj period mm. okay while now astronomy is a very powerful and accurate and advanced and advanced technology science, mm. science. okay mm. now astronomists they can tell you when the the eclipse of the eclipse moon. of the moon exactly after how many years and in specific timing and seconds mm. i mean how we believe them on this and we cannot believe them and seeing, seeing the crescent of the, the, the Ramadan. birth of mm. uh, the crescent. Mm. So we should really think about it and take it logically. Mm. Alhamdulillah, in Oman now, we really depend on uh, this science and mm. we take it as a tool of proving the start of the month of Ramadan and other uh, lunar months throughout the year. Now we'll go to today's topic, which is the pillars of faith. And uh, before I ask you the first question, Sheikh. Yeah. What are the pillars of faith? The pillars of faith, uh, they were mentioned in the Holy Quran and also in the authentic hadith or sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mm. There are six. Mm. It's believing in Allah, angels, divine books, in the day of judgment, uh, prophets, messengers, and on fate mm. or qadr. Fate or, or destiny. Qadr. Yeah, destiny, mm. yes. So those are the six uh, pillars of, uh, of faith. Of faith, yes. Sheikh, what do we mean by pillars linguistically and in Islamic perspective? Pillars in English, as I found in a dictionary, means the fundamental support of any structure to keep it stand still. Mm. Okay. So, for example, if we have a table with... Uh, designed to have four legs mm. then these each leg is considered as a pillar of that table mm. so when you remove one leg what happens the table, the falls table or will collapses. fall or mm. collapses mm. similarly in islamic when we say rukun or pillar of any form of worship we mean it's a fundamental action should be done in order that uh, to complete that worship mm. For example, in uh, fasting the month of Ramadan, mm. then one of the pillars you should have intention mm. near, a sincere intention that you fast the month of Ramadan. Mm. If somebody does not have this intention and just to wake up, uh, oh, is it Ramadan today? Then, okay, I start to, to fast. fast. Mm. Then his uh, fasting is not accepted. Mm. Also, uh, purity. Mm. It's a rukun of being a fasting person, mm. okay? For example, in prayers, if somebody does not uh, recite Al-Fatiha, the, the first, opening chapter, the opening chapter mm. then his prayers is not accepted. So, in short, a pillar in Islam means an action which must be performed in order to be accepted by the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I give you also, especially in the month of Ramadan, many people travel to perform Umrah. Hmm. 
which is one, the main uh, yes uh, the main uh, pilgrim mm. okay to Mecca. There are pillars, intention, sincere intention, okay, near, and also to wear and declare uh, the ihram, the start of uh, this action of uh, Umrah, to go around Kaaba and to uh, walk between Safa and Marwa for seven times. Mm. So these are the pillars. If somebody does not action or perform one of these actions, then the whole act is not accepted. Is not accepted. Mm. We were thinking a lot about this topic, uh, Sheikh Saud, and uh, why do you think uh, it is important to discuss about the pillars of faith? The true faith in Islam mm. is gained through reflection, acquisition of knowledge, and not by blind following. Mm. Okay, So it is very important to discuss this topic because if... I try to grow my uh, child, making him believe in the existence of Allah. Then I should give him the reasons, not only by telling him that I am a Muslim, then you should follow me Mm. and you should be a Muslim. Mm. And also these pillars, they are mentioned in the Holy Quran and the authentic sayings of the Prophet. So for all Muslims, they should believe in them as they are mentioned there and also to be ready for any discussion or dialogue or challenge they might hear from non-Muslims. They should have a fundamental basics Mm. on uh, these uh, pillars Mm. because we don't want... Uh, Muslims who are blind followers. Mm. We need a strong, convinced Muslims. So the aim of discussing this topic, to go through each pillar and what uh, the relation related questions might a Muslim face or maybe some Muslims would not know about uh, them. Sheikh, how did we come to know about the pillars of faith? As I said, Mm. they are mentioned in the Holy Quran. And uh, there is one uh, authentic saying of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. It is mentioned in the Bukhari and Muslim, which are the books of prophetic tradition. Yeah, prophetic uh, tradition, that somebody came and asked the Prophet. In fact, it is Angel uh, Jibreel who Mm. came and asked him, about uh, these pillars Mm. of Iman or faith, then the Prophet mentioned or replied, it is believing in Allah, his angels, his messengers, books, the day of judgment, and Qadr, which is destiny. Mm. So they are collected in one authentic hadith. Beside that, I mentioned, they are mentioned in the Holy Quran. Let us start, Sheikh, with the first uh, pillar, which is believing in Allah. As Muslims, we believe in Allah, but there are others or some people um, around the world deny his existence and would ask what reason do we have for believing in him, especially that we don't see him. If I start with the second part of your question, Mm. saying that we don't see him, Mm. that may be taken as a a reason of denying his existence, Mm. then we are... uh, being foolish to ourselves mm. ourselves because we believe in many things and we don't see them mm. we believe there is wind there is oxygen but we don't see it uh, you know by uh, our naked uh, Eye. eyes mm. uh, we believe in uh, electricity we see uh, the effect of electricity but we don't see the current mm. okay we believe in common sense. In common sense. And we don't see it. <laughs> we don't see it. Yeah. Uh, we believe in our emotions. Okay, but uh, how they're formed, how they uh, appear, how they affect us, we don't know. Gravity. Uh, uh, gravity. So there are many the, facts. The list is long. Uh, the list is long. Mm. So saying that Allah is invisible, then we don't believe in him then, uh, of course, uh, cannot be taken as an excuse. But I don't know if you agree with me. As these people believe in other things than Allah, which they don't see like electricity and gravity, because they can see the effect of it. 
They can also see the effect of uh, Allah of subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first part of your uh, question. Mm. When, uh, what reason do we have as Muslims or true believers around the world mm. that we believe that Allah exists? Mm. Because we see the effect. Mm. We see this universe. When a Bedou, a Bedou is a nomadic person, normally lives in the desert. Mm. Also, we can call Bedous who live uh, in the forest, they can be called uh, Bedous. Any nomadic person mm. is, uh, in Arabic, we call them uh, nomadic. Uh, we call them, uh, sorry, Bedou. Bedou. Mm. One Bedouin was asked, he was a Muslim, how do you prove there is Allah? Mm. Then, very short answer, very logic, mm. very strong he said, as a Bedouin, I live in a desert. Mm. If I see a camel dunk, mm. dunk is the stool mm. of a camel. Mm. If I see somewhere in this wide uh, desert, mm. if I see a camel dunk, I know for sure there is a camel. Mm. There was a camel here. There is no uh, question that uh, the, the camel was not here. Yes. Mm. If I see a foot trace, mm. I know somebody has passed here. Mm. I know somebody was here. Mm. Okay. Similarly, if I see the trees, if I see the moon, if I see all this universe around me, mm. I know there is somebody who has created them. Yes. Okay. Mm. I cannot deny there is somebody who has created all this because everything in this universe goes in a very unique system. Hmm. For example, if we go back to the astronomy, you see the sun, it raises in a very accurate time and we can predict even after 100 years that the sunrise will be on this specific time. Because it follows it, a system. It, it follows a system. Hmm. Whose system is that? Hmm. Yeah. If we deny there is a creator, then whose system the sun is following? It cannot Who's, be a coincidence. Uh, it cannot be. Hmm. Another scholar was asked, hmm. he was in a challenge with uh, an atheist. Hmm. Okay, The atheist told him, I challenge you that you can prove there is Allah. Then the scholar hmm. replied to that guy and he said, this challenge, we should make it in public. Okay. Not between me and you. Okay. Let's uh, set a day and a time where we meet in public. Then the day and the time was declared mm -hmm. that on such a day or whatever, we will meet in a gathering and there will be a challenge. Deliberately, that scholar came late. To the challenge. To the challenge. Mm. The atheist was very proud and very happy. He said, oh, you see, that guy was afraid. He did not show up. He did not show up. Mm. Then later on, the scholar arrived. And he said, in a teasing way, the atheist told him, Ha, huh, so why are you late? You are afraid, yeah? You don't have any proof. He said, no, no, no. Uh, let me explain to you what happened. You know that I live in the other side of River Bank. Mm. No. And when I came... I missed the commercial boat where I, I ride and I pay. So I was very annoyed and suddenly a strange thing happened. He said, what? He said, I saw the tree turning to dry wood and it started to cut itself and forming a boat. Yeah. And then I was very happy to see that. And I managed, you know, not to arrive, but... I was a bit late. Then the atheist told him, what? A boat? It made itself? That's it's very impossible. stupid excuse you have. He said, no. Ah, so why do you disagree with me that a boat <laughs> formed itself? He said, because it's not possible. Then the scholar asked him, then is it possible the tree has formed, formed itself? itself? Is it possible all this, you know, universe, the sun and the moon and the planets, all this have formed itself? Then the atheist was astonished. Mm. He could not reply. So that was the only answer he gave him.
So Allah is there whether we see him through his signs, his signs hmm. or we deny he is there. As Muslim, we believe he is there. And we believe he is the only one who deserves to be worshipped and obeyed. Okay, I don't know if you agree with me that others who believe in different gods or other gods, why should they believe in Allah specifically? First of all, Hatim and dear listeners, Allah is the name of God in Arabic and in Islam. So when we say Allah, we don't mean that he is the God of Muslims only. We believe in him as the God of all, mm. believers and disbelievers. Okay. Okay. And uh, when our prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, peace was sent mm. to the, you know, given or rewarded prophethood, amongst his own society there were people believing there is a supreme god okay but have hazy ideas about him so some people associated mm. beside him idols mm. even uh, trees <laughs> whatever and funny enough had him mm. that amongst all those idols there were idols made by dates the dry date, yes. kind of fruit, a tamar. So these people used to curve, you know, a nice shaped idol, idol mm. made of dates. Uh, dates. And when they get hungry, they start eating from the same God, mm. which they worship. Okay. Mm. So God should have special attributes mm. and not anyone Uh, who can be called God. Okay? Mm. So, if the door is open, then everybody can claim that he is God. You just mentioned the word attributes. What are the attributes of Allah, Sheikh Saud? He is unique mm -hmm. in his attributes. Mm. Okay? He doesn't have the same nature as his creatures. Okay? Some of these attributes... He is eternal, does not have a beginning or an end. Mm. You cannot say when Allah did exist and when his end. Okay, And he is willing and powerful. And in this powerful, I remember a friend of mine called me. Mm. And he said, I seek your assistance in replying a question. I said, welcome, what is the question? Yeah. He said... One of his children is studying in a multi cultural school, cultural school. Mm. and one of the young uh, children there asked his child as a Muslim, he said, if Allah is powerful, then why does not he create, you know, the childish thinking, mm. why does not he create a stone which he cannot carry? <laughs> of course, it's a funny question. Mm. And this friend, he wanted an answer to reply. I said, if he creates something which is powerful than him, then that creation should take the place of God. The place of God. Mm. So when we say he is powerful, then he is extremely powerful. More than anything. More than anything. Mm. Stones, then mountains, then whatever. Mm. So a childish question is not in the right position because if Allah creates something which is not capable of handling, then he's not God. Mm. Okay, He is merciful, he is wise, and I said many attributes. You just uh, mentioned merciful. Some people wonder if Allah is merciful, then why did he create pain, hardship, and evil? Okay, this question is always raised by non-believers. Mm. And uh, they say, okay, if you have convinced us that Allah is there mm. and not necessary for us to see him, but we see his effect, then why did he create evil? Mm. In Islam, first of all, we are not allowed to question Allah mm. himself. Okay, But there are some questions where we can be asked as Muslims, mm. not Allah to be asked those questions. Mm. Why Allah did you do this and that? Mm. Okay, And uh, 
Some scholars, they say it, and I really believe in this, not just a blind follower mm. of what uh, scholars said. Mm. But they say Allah has created evil, hardship, and pain for many reasons. First of all, it is to test us, to purify us, because as believers, when they go under hardship, it's a sign of wiping their sins. Mm. Okay, And also, yes, he has created a system he wanted us to follow. Beside that, he has created evil and did not permit it. He did not permit us to do that evil action. So, if he just created happiness, we will not value happiness when we don't know what is sorrow. Mm. If he has created health only, then we would not value health if we did not test pain and, pain and, and illness. Mm, suffering. If he has created only richness, mm. okay, then we would not value this uh, wealth. wealth. Mm. We would not value this bounty mm. of him Okay, if we did not know that or uh, there is uh, poverty, poverty. Mm. Okay, so evil is there to test us. Will we go divert ourselves and go to those forbidden actions or we will follow the system which he wanted us to follow? Mm. And I remember last year, I think, in one of the episodes, I said, he's the master, he's the creator. So he knows best what is good for us and what is bad. Okay. And I gave an example of somebody buying a fancy car like a BMW and for 40,000 Omani reals. When this car breaks down, where will he take it to? To the showroom. To the showroom and to the manufacturer because they are the best people to handle the problem. Mm. Okay. So when we go to Allah, and we follow his commands, then we will not fall into we evil. We will not fall into evil. And also, I liked one of the scholars, he said, Allah wanted to give us total freedom and responsibility. Mm. So he did not want to create us all in one path. Mm. So this is a form of giving you freedom. So choose what is best for you. So he did not impose goodness in us and he did not impose uh, He did not impose or mm. oppressed mm. on us follow a specific system. He wanted us to be choosies. We can choose this or choose so that. So if we choose evil, then it is from our own doings. Yes, of course. Mm. Of course. Also, Hatem, I remember one of my friends, he asked me a question. Mm. Similar to this question, he said, some countries they suffer of drought and uh, starvation mm. why is that when allah is there i mm. said we don't blame allah while we are to mm. be blamed mm. okay we cannot blame him because of our own actions shortfalls i mm. gave him an example of somalia mm. one of the african home countries mm. fightings uh, wars prevented people of cultivation so we cannot blame Allah why, why people are dying of starvation while the land is there, everything is there. Resources but are there. The resources are there, but people, they, they kill yeah, each other. Yeah, they kill each other. And yeah. even in terms of around the world, you find a lot of festivals like water festival or tomato festival or food festival where people go <laughs> and waste this food in these festivals. While uh, other peoples around the world, uh, they are starving or yes, they are in hunger. That's a good uh, input. And also remember in Islam, there is zakah, mm. where the wealthy give 2.5% of their wealth to the poor. Yeah. So if we yes. practice mm. this, if we apply this, then we are fine. Sheikh, can someone ask Allah to show him his power and proof of his existence? We should use our common sense in reaching to Allah. Mm. I remember also a story of uh, a man from Latin America. Mm. He used to uh, worship sort of idol. Mm. And one day a dog came and urinated on this uh, idol. Mm. Then that guy, he said, if this is God, then why it couldn't prevent itself from this very bad action? Mm. Then he started to search for the true uh, God. 
So the common sense should be the first tool in reaching to Allah. Mm. Yes, we can ask Allah mm. to show us some of the signs, uh, signs like Prophet Abraham. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon he him. believed in Allah, but he wanted to have tranquility. When he asked Allah, show me how do you realize the dead? Hmm. Okay, then Allah asked him to take uh, four birds and cut slaughter them, them and cut them. them. And the story is known in the Holy Quran. Hmm. So yes, if a Muslim or a non-Muslim want approve then he should pray sincerely to Allah to show him the signs and if he is sincere then definitely Allah he, will show he would him. get the answer definitely hmm. there is no doubt about that at all Sheikh let's move on to the next pillar which is the belief in angels okay who are the angels and how the, do they differ from men okay angels they are one of the creations of Allah they as it's mentioned uh, in some uh, authentic hadith, they were created from light. Mm. And they differ from us human beings that angels, they were created for a specific role mm. and they cannot disobey following Allah's commands. Mm. We have the choice. We human being can follow and can Disobey. Allah Disobey. Hmm. But these angels, they are only to follow Allah's commands. Hmm. They cannot at all argue or disobey a single order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Sheikh, why should we bother to believe or know about the angels? We believe in them or on them, whatever is right in English, because they are mentioned in the Holy Quran. Mm. Okay, and whatever is mentioned in the Holy Quran, like the jinns, mm. so many people, they don't believe in the existence of jinns. But we as Muslims, we believe because they are mentioned in the Holy Quran. Mm. Okay, so we believe in them because they are mentioned in the Holy Quran. And also some of their roles is related to our actions. What roles are you talking about here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them different roles. Mm. Uh, even some scholars, they said, whatever happened in the environment, the natural changes here, like the wind, mm. the movement of the clouds, these are some of the roles which Allah has given to some angels. Mm. Some of them, they were created to record our deeds. Mm. And we have two angels, one on our right hand and one on the left hand. So the right hand side Angel is recording all the good deeds mm. like that. They will record even a single word we talk, mm. a single action. They don't know about our intention. Mm. Why did we say that or why did we do that? But they do record all the actions and words. Some of uh, their uh, roles is to deliver the messages from Allah to messengers. And the uh, famous angel known is Jebrail. He is the angel, peace be upon him, who was delivering the divine messages from Allah to the Prophet, prophets. Prophets and messengers. Also, mm. some of their roles to carry the punishment mm. which Allah bestows on, on, bestows on, on a nation. Uh, on a nation. Mm. Yeah. So, if we believe that we have two angels here and uh, they record every single action and words, then, of course, that will have a positive effect on us that we don't say, you know, lies, we don't act uh, bad because we know everything is recorded. Are they in a higher state or degree than human beings? Some scholars, they took the story of the creation of Adam, peace be upon him, as peace a proof upon. that we, a human being, are in a higher position than the angels. Hmm. Uh, because Allah has asked the angels to prostrate before Adam, when he created him, mm. Allah said, when I complete his creation and I blow my spirit on him, then he commanded the angels to prostrate before him. But some scholars, they said, if we follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm. then we are in a higher position because 
we go against our wills we go against our lusts mm. okay and this adds a, a value to us that mm. when we follow then we are in a higher position than the angels mm. the angels they were created specifically to do roles so they don't have the desire of doing the wrong mm. but we have that option so when we follow allah we are in a higher position than the angels. When we disobey, then we are in a lower position or uh, level or standard than even the evils, not mm. only the angels, even than the animals. Mm. We are degrading ourselves to a lower position than even animals. Okay. Sheikh, you hear people mentioning that an angel is looking over me. Is this right to say? Should we believe in angels in a particular manner or should we accede to this level? Is it true to say that an angel is looking after me or is taking care of me? It is true. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Holy Quran there are angels created to protect mm. us from calamities or accidents. Mm. They are there. Okay? But I should care about Allah is protecting me. Mm. These are the means only to protect me. Mm. Okay, but uh, the master and the one who is really protecting me is Allah. And I should be very careful about my actions for the sake of Allah more than for the sake of these two angels. They are recording my deeds. Mm. Okay, so yes, they are there to protect us. But when Allah's command or decision came on us that we should go through any hardship, mm. then these angels, they are asked by Allah to be away mm. so that we go through that hardship in order to test us, mm. as I mentioned earlier. Sheikh, we'll move on to the third pillar of faith, which is the belief in books. Tell us about this pillar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty Allah has created us for a reason, mm. which is to follow His commands, yes, to worship Him, to obey Him in all forms of worship which He has declared. The declaration of these forms of worship, they came through books and prophets. So, each prophet at his own time, he was supported by a sign. And some of these signs, they were books which contains divine messages. Revelation. Of, uh, revelation messages of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. So we as Muslims, we believe they are divine books revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his previous prophets before the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mm. And we believe the Quran also is a divine book revealed to Muhammad as a support and as a conclusion of all those divine books. An argument always raised by uh, some people, mm. non-Muslims, they say, if you Muslims believe in the Torah, you believe in the Bible, you believe in other books, Hmm. then why insisting hmm. on the Qur'an? We insist on the Holy Qur'an as the only book to be followed because, as I mentioned just a bit earlier, I said the teachings which were revealed to prophets, most of them they were valid to guide the people on that specific time. In that particular nation. Particular nation and time also, era. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty Allah, has accumulated all the divine messages mm. which are valid for the universe, mm. not only for the specific nation in one book. So the Holy Quran, first of all, it is the seal of all uh, divine messages, mm. divine books from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty Allah. And it contains valid messages which are applicable, can be practiced and applied everywhere. Hmm. 
in this world. Every nation in every nation. So it is a universal book. It's not uh, specifically for Muslims. Even mm. this is a funny fact. Some people, they don't know. That even a non-Muslims, if they practice what is in the Quran, they will benefit. Mm. If an intended thief steals something without any strong reason of stealing it, if his hand is chopped, then what will happen? Everybody will be scared of uh, doing the same act. Okay, So it is a universal. It contains valid messages for all nations. Mm. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the almighty Allah, yeah. has promised to preserve the Holy Quran of any alteration or mm. changes. That's why the same copy of the Holy Quran, you find it in Oman, you will find the same version in India, China, China, Russia. wherever. Hmm. But here, I'm talking about the Arabic Quran. Yeah, I not was just the, about to ask you about the translation of the Quran. Yeah, You have the translation of the text of the Quran hmm. in many different languages. Hmm. And these translations differ from one person to another. Yeah. Are they still considered to be the Quran? In this case, if the book has... The translation is more than the wordings of the Arabic wordings of the Quran, then this is not called Quran. It is a translation of the Quran. The Quran is purely is the Arabic wordings, which is written in Arabic, which, as I said, you will find the same copy here and wherever in the world. When somebody gives you a copy of the Holy Quran, you will see it the same. Mm. This is because the Almighty has promised to preserve it. Mm. to protect it from any human interference. While other divine books, which were before the Holy Quran, we can see very clear. Now we have a version, for version 1, version 2, whatever, of the Bibles. The one you find it in Catholic Church, it's different from Orthodox Church, whatever. So this is why we are insisting in the Holy Quran as to be the book to be followed, because and unifying. Unifying, mm. and it is preserved from any alteration or human interference. How important is the belief in the books, uh, Sheikh uh, Saud? A Muslim mm. will not be considered as a Muslim mm. if he denies any of the previous prophets or any previous divine books. Mm. Here, what I mean by denying here, or the, uh, the word deny here, that he says that I don't believe there was a Torah. Mm. I don't believe there was a Bible. I only believe there is a Quran. Then he is not considered to be a Muslim. Mm. So it is very important to know that there were some books, some of them they were mentioned in the Holy Quran. Some of them, they were not mentioned. Similarly, when we come to the pillars of prophets, there are only about, if I'm not mistaken, about 25 prophets mentioned in the Holy Quran. There are many prophets. Thousands that have not been mentioned. Some uh, scholars, they said there are around 140,000 prophets were sent to human beings since the time of Adam until the seal of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mm. So it is very important to believe in every single divine Re book. Revelation. Revelation. But as I said, the only one to be followed now is the seal of all these divine books, which is the Holy Quran. Sheikh, we have gone through three pillars in today's episode. And tomorrow, inshallah, we are going to go through the other three pillars of faith. Inshallah. Before we end today's topic, what would you like to give as a word of advice to the believers and non-believers in terms of these three pillars that we have discussed? Of course, I would urge myself and urge others, as I mentioned, mm. that we should use our brain, common sense, in reaching to Allah, first mm. of all. Yes. And this will add a value to our life. Mm. This will control the pride and arrogancy some people have. Mm. And in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned mm. 
those people who denied the existence of Allah, they ended up to look foolish even in front of their nation. Hmm. Like Pharaoh, hmm. he claimed that he is... He is the divine God. He is the divine God. Hmm. And what happened to him? He died. How can he be a divine God? Hmm. Then uh, what happened after his death? People for uh, generations after for him generation. spoke about and spoke about how he died in a very miserable way and his body is still preserved yeah. and people just go and, uh, and visit his, and his body. Visit his body. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Even in this uh, new era we are living, there are some people who are arrogant and thought they are lords. Mm. What happened? Some of them died in a prison mm. and some of them they died, as you said, miserable way. So knowing that Allah is there, adds a value mm -hmm. to us and also we always as Muslims have to have a good thought of Allah mm. and this of course give us a spiritual power boost. that boost and power in order that whatever is happening in my life then I should seek support and help of the Almighty Allah. Mm. If I want to, in my studies, I need his support. Help. Mm. I need his support in finding a job. I, I need support in all aspects of my life. Mm. Even those people who claim to be atheists, sometimes themselves, they turn to reach to a point that they declare there is Allah. One of them is a young American he was a member in a parachuting club. Mm. And one day he was flying with a balloon and, uh, you know, some accident happened. The balloon got busted, whatever. While falling, a sound from his, the bottom of his uh, heart mm. called, Oh God, help me. Then when <laughs> he reached uh, to the ground safely, then he started to wonder, why did I call... God, I don't believe in him. Hmm. Then he started to change the principle, the false principle, and started to search for the truth. Hmm. So whoever denies that Allah does not exist, then he should ask himself, who created the sun, the plan? You cannot say by coincidence. That's a really unacceptable and really look a very foolish word to be say everything has happened in a coincidence okay because then the house the car the everything has uh, so so i urge everybody to use the common sense to reach to the truth and inshallah they will be there sheikh saud bin ali al hashmi thank you so much for being with us today and we hope to see you tomorrow inshallah in part two of this session inshallah uh, continuing the three other pillars of faith and i hope our listeners have benefited from today's session Thank you all for listening and tuning in. I'm your host, Hatem al Absalam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You have been listening to Reaching Out, Reaching Out Through Dialogue.